Hey there fellow creators, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios. And if you guys don't follow my channel, you're just coming here and passing, you might not know or have thought or saw that about two and a half months ago, I broke my right wrist, the one I use for drawing and painting. Uh, that was felt really devastating, it was completely crazy, uh, but over the course of recovering and being able to hold a pencil again and hold a brush again and be able to draw again, there's some things that I learned. So, stick around for the few things that I learned about art from breaking my wrist. So it seemed like an average Monday morning. I was walking into work down the pavement from the parking lot. It was actually the Monday of the last week of the job that I was quitting. I tripped on basically my own two feet, fell forward, put my hands out, and all of that weight went straight onto my wrist, fracturing it. That was some of the worst pain I've ever had in my life, and the first, that first week was really something horrible. Um, after that happened, I was like, this is the most devastating thing in the world. I can't draw now. I mean, I can sort of use my left hand, but I was in so much pain that I couldn't bring myself to do so. But as things kind of came back and slowly and being able to just hold a pencil and write my name uh, was one of the biggest uh, hurdles to overcome, especially in the, uh, the first few weeks. So I was going to the doctor and they're like, sign your name. And I'm like, uh, I can't. Sorry. Uh, hand the pencil to my dad. Here, sign my name. But uh, I was able to work my way back and I guess I'm young enough that I'm uh, able to heal a bit better than I might be able to if I was, you know, 80. Um, but I learned some things coming back to art and coming back to um, trying to find ways to create because I really wanted to. It's, you know, the very fiber of my being is, is, is creating. So I was like, okay, I have to adapt. I have to try to find ways to draw that aren't necessarily the way I want to, but are the way that I need to in order to get the ideas out there. So actually before I could hold my regular sketch pen, uh, I found that the biggest issue was because my wrist was in a brace, I couldn't tilt forward just enough to get that little bit of an angle that I needed. But at a certain point I was like, oh wait a minute, I have a digital drawing tablet and you don't necessarily need to tilt your wrist to do that. So that's actually the first thing that I was able to pick up and use and uh, make something with and I actually ended up doing a, uh, a, a about an, I think it was about an hour long digital concept for what became uh, my first painting once my hand started feeling a bit less painful, um, several weeks after that. Um, now that painting process video is up on the channel. It came out, uh, I think, last month. And for a lot of that video, you can actually see me painting with that brace on. Uh, because at that point in time, I wasn't in pain, but I still couldn't move it to the same degree. And I found that there were a few tricks that I could do that actually helped me make a better painting, despite the fact that I couldn't move my wrist. So before we get into the details of, of all of the, the things that I learned, I do want to talk and review about the four joints of drawing. Uh, drawing, painting, creating, what have you. Uh, and those are your fingers, your wrist, your elbow, and your shoulder. These change the way uh, you can manipulate line and, and shape, specifically with uh, when uh, drawing and painting. Uh, with your fingers, you're getting little short lines. Your wrist, you tend to get arcs. Your elbow, you get bigger arcs, and your shoulder is really what allows you to make those long, straight lines without having to use a ruler. Uh, now, the wrist obviously being one of those four joints, I thought, wow, eh, I don't know what to do. At first, I was like, wait a minute, I don't actually use my wrist for a lot of stuff. I actually use a lot of the finger motions, though I did learn that a lot of the finger motions through muscles are connected to the muscles in your wrist, which makes them a little harder to do. I guess anatomy lesson for anyone uh, drawing the, uh, the figure play with the, uh, the muscles in the fingers, make sure they actually go down your arm because it's like this whole section of my arm was in pain. Um, but also it's like, I can just kind of hold this still. As long as I can just do this, I can just draw with my whole shoulder and use that. And that's, uh, that's mostly what kind of got me through. Okay, so let's actually talk about the stuff that I really learned here. Uh, first is that uh, for especially larger scale stuff, you don't need a lot of actual movement, especially the wrist and finger movement. You need it more for sketching for sure, but for a large brush, you can hold the large brush uh, not just here. A lot of times you'll see me in, in my videos kind of doing the finger motion like this. But part of the reason why brushes have long handles is so you can hold them back 
and just use your whole arm and as the brush is an extension of your arm. Uh, a lot of artists do this. I'm tr trying to do more of it myself. And in fact, breaking my wrist has gotten me to start trying to do it more because it keeps you, your lines expressive and free, but you don't lose the control as a pro uh, uh, um, you don't lose the control of um, using the brush. You just it just frees the lines up, and you don't you don't like it does like it doesn't destroy the detail. It just keeps you looser. As the old adage goes, necessity is the father of invention. And with my physical limitation, I found that I was actually inspired to create more. Uh, having the limitation than if I was just free to use it as I did normally. I was like, okay, well, this is a problem to solve. How do I create something through the fact that I can't move my arm that way? So again, brushes, digital stuff, uh, pastels in particular, uh, because you just hold something and it's your arm. You don't really need your wrist for that. Another thing that I learned, and this is mostly a mental thing, um, motivation really fuels the creative process. Um, I remember uh, spend a few days at my, at, at my parents' house right after, um, right after this happened. It was like the week before Thanksgiving. Um, I was sitting on, uh, on a couch in one of their side rooms uh, watching, YouTube, watching other artists on, on YouTube on, on the TV. And I'm like, I gotta, I gotta stay inspired. I gotta stay, uh, uh, at least keep, keep the uh, creative uh, brain muscle working. Uh, you can work through the pain to some degree as long as you don't push it t too far. Uh, I made it a point to uh, avoid the pain pills after a while uh, because I didn't want to push it s too hard and make it worse. So it allowed me to work just enough that I could find what worked for me without trying to uh, you know, break something even more so. And I found that um, you can sit and feel sorry for yourself. But after a couple of days of that, it's like, okay, I'm done with this. I'm done with feeling sorry for myself. I'm going to get up and get to work now. And part of that sitting and feeling sorry for yourself means that you're not waiting for inspiration to hit you. You're going and finding it. Okay, so that was kind of rambly. So here's like the sum up of really what I learned. One, don't push yourself too hard right away. Two, just because you're not working the way you want to doesn't mean that that's the limit your creativity. In fact, the limits could inspire you to make more stuff just in a different way. And just because it isn't drawing and painting doesn't mean it isn't creative. You can do a lot of things that are creative. I cook a lot. That, uh, that's a very creative act. And the most important thing I learned was think about the four joints of drawing, hold back on your brush, and keep your lines looser. Uh, for a long time I've been really trying to just detail, 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 but it's like you lose something when you just try to render a shape out. You gotta keep your lines and your brush strokes a little, little looser if you want to make work that uh, is a bit more expressive. But I am curious on what you guys have to say about this. Have you guys ever seriously injured yourself, especially your drawing uh, hand or anything like that? Or do you live with a physical limitation that prevents you from doing art the way you want to? If you've ever had or currently have any of those physical limitations, how has anything I've said possibly inspired you to think a little bit differently and think, okay, maybe I can create, just not the way that I want to? And how is that limitation possibly able to get you to make something that you never could have made before? Additionally, for those watching who have followed me through my healing process, I want to thank you for your thoughts and prayers throughout the course of this. Uh, it's meant the world to me that you guys have my support and have my back for all of that. And as always, if you learned anything or enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Get subscribed if you're not already. Consider uh, joining any of my other communities online in the description box below, including a community discord. Um, keep on creating, and this has been for Cinderblock Studios, I will see you guys next time. Has anything I've said inspired you or made you think differently about how you might be able to create just not the way you thought, you thought not the way you think you want to? That probably, f*** it.